In this video, we're going to make a pinion for the T-Kip clock. And we started with some EN8 steel and started to machine the pinion to size. We're not going to be using a tailstock and therefore we started out with quite a large diameter to give some rigidity and turned it down to the required 5.5 millimeters outside diameter. The spindle was removed from the lathe and transferred over to the rotary table and a considerable amount of time was taken ensuring that the cutter was dead on center otherwise you get a clear leaning on the teeth much more pronounced than on wheels. The cutter speed was also massively reduced compared to cutting brass wheels at about 400, 450 RPM. Unlike the brass wheels where the full depth is taken all at once, with the steel pinions a small amount is taken each time. The total depth, theoretical depth for this cut was about 1.35 millimetres. So we were taking it in stages, getting to that final depth and of course a final pass taken to give a nice finish on the tooth. Whilst there is a theoretical depth, uh, similar principle than the brass wheels was taken in that the tooth form was crept up on until no more of the layout blue could be seen on the very tips of the leaves. No, no, <laughs> done in the swore. After that minor disaster, the pinion was thankfully found and I started to polish it up with various grades of polishing compound just to get rid of some of those machining marks before heat treating. Some boric acid was used and mixed with some rubbing alcohol to make a slurry. And this was placed in a little wire basket along with the pinion, with the pinion completely compact and surrounded to ensure that there was no oxidation during the heat treating process. So I've literally just cooled this down and then run it under a little bit more water under the tap as well and that's what it's looking like and you can see already that it doesn't look overly corroded. I'm just going to try and keep this little basket together so I can use it again so I'll just keep tapping and there it is. And look at that. <laughs> no, no scaling. No. Okay so um, just do a little bit of a file test here. Um, and you can, it obviously it's a feel thing rather than a, rather than a hearing, but you can just tell it's not gripping in, it's not digging in, it's sliding over, so it is definitely hard. So it's just a case now of um, just tempering this back again now. So once again, a bit like the clock hand video uh, where I made the clock hands for anybody that's watched that. I don't know how Chris on Clickspring manages to do that. Um, that does not look blue on the camera. I can see it through the through the uh, viewfinder, and yet that is a crystal blue colour. Uh, I admit there's a couple of patches on it, um, but overall it is pretty consistent in the colour. Um, so we're just going to clean this up again now. It's got a couple more grades of polish. Uh, going to go back to this uh, grey uh, paste, uh, and then we'll go with a like a, a, a finer finish.
there's a finished pinion. And you can see that there's a nice reflection on the leaves. So they've taken a nice polish. And there's quite a bit of debate about whether we should harden pinions, um, whether it does serve the purpose for wear. But one thing that it definitely does do, in my opinion, from my little experience with pinions, is that it definitely um, allows you to get a higher polish on the on the faces. So there's the pinion all finished. Pretty happy with that. Um, I think there's still a little bit of rouge inside that uh, inside that ball, so I think I just need to give it a bit more of a clean again. But that's looking quite good in my eyes. All right. Well, thank you again for watching. See you next time.